the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the knowledge of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have, have mercy, mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves, ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. And your compassion forgive us our sins, known and unknown. Things we have done, things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit so that we may live and serve you in the midst of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. So 
Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Though he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Father will honor. 
Now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. Well, that's obviously Jesus. What's the interesting thing about 
even here at St. John's because this building was built in so many different stages and so many different eras, we have pictures of Jesus that look totally different from each other. The one in the chapel looks different than the ones that we see here at the sanctuary because, well, there was a lot of time between those two buildings. And they were constructed by different artists who had different images and ideas about who Jesus actually was. In the Gospel lesson, we have this scene where Greeks come to Jesus to, to actually Philip. And Philip goes to Andrew, and their request is, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. We would like to see Jesus. And so both Philip and now Andrew, they go to Jesus and tell him this, that Greeks are re requesting an audience. And it seems a little disjointed because Jesus doesn't say, oh, okay, I'll go meet him. I'll see him at 10 o'clock or maybe, how about 12? Let's do a lunch together. And they could see me there. He doesn't do that. He doesn't even give a description of himself. He doesn't say, well, you know, I have long hair, I have short hair, I have a short crop beard, I have a long beard, I have this color tunic on. He doesn't say that. I'm, I'm six foot or I'm five foot two. He does, you know, I'm stocky, I'm slim. He doesn't say anything about that. As a matter of fact, one of the things that uh, I think is a real uh, a rabbit hole for Christians to go through is uh, actually try and think about what Jesus looked like. What color was his skin? What, how long was his hair? You know, uh, uh, was he smiling? Was he happy? All these different things. But here's what Jesus tells him. Unless a grain of wheat dies, it remains on its own. But if it falls into the earth and dies, it bears much fruit. He's given a description of himself. Not a class in how to plant wheat, but this is who the Christ is. The one who dies and raises up and bears much fruit. That is important for us to remember. That's the picture of Jesus that we need to keep in our mind. The one who dies. It's kind of interesting. Philip and Andrew. We see them at the beginning of John's gospel. They're the first to tell each other that they have seen Jesus. And now they are telling other people, Greeks, people who aren't even Jewish. They're telling, they're, they're becoming not followers of Jesus, but the apostles, a disciple you see is the one who is a student, just follows around. But the apostle is the one who sends out with, it gets sent out with the message of who Jesus is. And now Philip and Andrew are in that ch uh, change of job description. No longer just listeners, but also ones that proclaim who Jesus is. Go tell them. Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies. He shows us his identity in those few words. It's really kind of hard for us to grab or understand, but imagine it this way. How many times in life has your life changed? How many deaths do you experience throughout your life? An infant gets born. The infant dies as an infant and he gets reborn as a toddler. As a toddler changes into a child. A teenager, an adolescent, we'd say. And then a young adult, adult. And not only just simply in terms of chronological age, that child goes from being a student to one who's graduated. And maybe goes off to college or maybe 
finds a career in some other trade, and that person changes, maybe gets married, that's a change in itself. Parenthood, a huge change. Empty nesters, all these different changes that people experience are all ways in which we die and our lives become transformed. As a matter of fact, as Paul tells us in the sixth chapter of Romans, the Christian life is one of dying and rising with Christ. We participate in that transformation. In the funeral liturgy, I quote often the sixth chapter of the book of Romans when I say, you know, none of, whenever we were baptized, we were baptized into Christ Jesus. We were baptized into his death. Therefore, as God raised him by the glory of the Father, we too can live a new life. And Lent definitely is a part of participating in that dying and rising with Christ. Not just simply once, but again and again and again throughout life with all its complexity, with all of its change, we die, we rise anew. We all need to keep that in mind. This is who the Christ is, the one who dies and gets transformed. And we are dying so that we might be transformed as well. People think about resurrection as something that just happens one time. You know, people think about uh, faith as kind of like the get out of hell free card. You know, you have that, well, you're not going to hell, you're going to heaven, it's going to be great. And that's what it is. It, you know, you need to hold on to that until you die. But no, that's not what it's like. That's not what living with the Christ is like. It is continually dying and rising with Christ to a new life. It's a mystery. It's a mystery in which we can't explain. But it's a mystery where God is and where we feel His presence. It is a mystery in which we accept all changes with grace and also with trust. That change is something that God brings about in our lives. And that he continually leads us through the process so that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>
come for this coming Holy Week. Next Wednesday, we will have a recording of Palm Sunday. We'll record it and it will post it on Facebook and YouTube on Sunday, but it will be recorded on Wednesday, a week from now. And then we will have Monday, Thursday. And that will uh, be uh, that will be at 7 p.m. Uh, on April the first. We'll have Good Friday at 3 p.m. in the afternoon. One service for Good Friday at 3 p.m. And then we will have Easter at 6:30 at Saturday evening. And then also 8 o'clock, which will be recorded. And then 10.15 will be the broadcast, and also that will, will be an in-person service as well. So on Easter, we have three in-person services, Saturday at 6.30, Sunday morning at 8 o'clock, and 10.15. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. You watch us through and through, and remember our sin no more. Make your church a community of forgiveness throughout the world. Give your people courage to forgive. Through them, show the world new possibilities. Bless ministries of repentance and reconciliation. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. You fill the earth from tiny grains of wheat to the mighty thunder. With your presence, and you call us to attend to your will for all creation. Grant weather that prepares the soil for seeds, protect all from violent storms, flooding, and wildfires. <coughs> Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You promise to write your law on our hearts. Guide citizens throughout the world to shape communities that reflect your mercy, justice, and peace, and give them creativity to work for the welfare of all. Hear us, O oh God. You sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Restore the joy of all who need to know your presence. Those who are lonely or feel unforgivable, those who need healing of mind and body, those who are dying, and all who grieve. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Jesus calls us to follow him in life and in death. Empower this congregation in discipleship. Equip your children and teachers in Sunday school, confirmation, and learning ministries. Give us your truth and wisdom to teach us to follow Jesus. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Almighty God, you place your hand upon all those who are suffering and brokenhearted. We lift up before you those in our community that need your healing presence in their lives. For Charlie, Ralph, Richard, Colleen, for Kathleen, Carrie, Ron, Tom, Eric, Tim, for Becky, and those who live before you in our hearts at this time. We pray for the family of Audrey Vinovich and ask that you would comfort them with the promise of the resurrection for eternal life. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy is great. In the cross of Christ, your name is glorified. We praise you for those who have given us words to worship you. With all those who have died in Christ, bring us into life everlasting. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you. O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. <coughs> we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise.
It is indeed right, our duty and your joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their ending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, 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 God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. But Zion Christ, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The night was supposed to be prayer. Our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for remembrance of me. Gathered in one by the power of the Holy Spirit, let us pray to Jesus' call. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy own kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Compassionate God, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Sustain us in our little pilgrimage, that our fasting be hunger for justice, our aims for making a peace, and our prayer, the song of grateful hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you.